Hi, everybody. I hope you're having as much fun as I am today, and hopefully we can get a little more uh, interesting onto actually the security conversation that we're having as part of this DevOps story. And hopefully we don't get caught up like we did in Slack earlier on the terms itself of DevSecOps or DevOps or just Dev or whatever it might be. And I want to introduce myself quickly, and uh, I'm, I'm the Global Field CISO for VMware Tanzu. And what I do every day is I work with our customers to understand how do we actually implement their modern application factories using both VMware and Tanzu tools and meeting their government or regulatory concerns. I work with a lot of banks, a lot of financial institutions, but even more important is I make sure that our, our own product teams understand where they're coming from. I spent 30 years in the industry as a CISO of a bank and I've just about every form of security role out there from pen tester to QSA to code reviewer. But I want to start off my story by really going into how did we all get here? You know, we've, we've talked about this plan to start off. Uh, Emily's talk earlier, I really loved that talk. It really got into the idea of the shifting model that's changing. But we, we also had a conversation on Slack around the idea of what really is, uh, you know, where would it come from? How to you know, get to where we are today? And this modern cycle that we have, which I love the idea of, of adding parallelization to it and, and, the inter and the loops themselves are not a static path. But when I was working at Wells Fargo over 25 years ago, we had a cycle like this. And this is something that we're using today's modern implementation of DevSecOps, which is what I want to talk about and how we can make that a better process following some of the things we've heard today. So when I worked at Wells Fargo, what we did is I was actually on the team that wrote the policies. I was actually part of the team that we implemented, how are you going to do the security within the bank? And that was tied back to the regulatory controls and the rationale of what, what we did for risk management. But I also consulted into the individual product teams. You know, we had actually the the teams who are making the products, you know, the online banking, the mortgages, the all the, uh, the stuff that has become automated now in banking environment, we help them understand what are these policies and procedures. But what has happened in the 20 years since then is, you know, that the development teams have gotten agile and extreme methodologies. They've actually gotten more, they've learned, they've iterated on their own processes and made themselves better. The operations teams, they've learned from, you know, become SREs and they've learned how to reduce the toil and, and increase the performance of what they're doing. The security teams are still doing the same sort of threat modeling. They're still doing a lot of paperwork, a lot of processes around how do you actually document what the risk is and share it with managers who can understand the risk profiles and make decisions. But that typically makes a lot of uh, toil. It makes these silos we talked about in Slack earlier, the idea that we have different teams and how do we actually bridge that divide? It's a really cumbersome conversation, what I really spend most of my days doing. Some of you out there, we talked about games already. Twitch on the last talk was, was something I wish I want to uh, get back into a bit more. Uh, I've always been involved in games. And for those who recognize the scene in front of us, it's really important to talk about how we've actually built these silos. We're going to get into it in just a, a moment here. But traditionally, the security teams have been out there and they're actually doing uh, you know this documentation where, where the development teams will, will go out and do their work. They'll throw it over the fence. And it, it's a very cumbersome, time-consuming process. Uh, recently, uh, VMware actually commissioned a, a study with the Forrester, and if you like, uh, reach out to me or reach out on Slack, I'm sure someone can share it here, and it's a research called Bridging the Developer and Security Divide, and it's, it's basically similar to what Heidi was saying earlier. It's a research that came out that validates your point of view, the idea that we're trying to say DevSecOps, but it really is not bridging the divide, and ends up having teams go out there and run on their own, and as you know, when you go out and run on your own, things happen. Oh my god, I just ran in. Save it. Oh, she's sticking clean. Oh, she's yes. Let's go. Let's go. Stick it to the plan. Stick it to the so like the talk earlier on chaos engineering and the idea that we're, we can't really estimate what the plan or path is going to be, you never know what those individual things are going to be. You know, it might be a security person coming in there bringing out ideas that, you know, what you're doing might have security issues, but you, you, you're trying to build that model of, of how do you actually get things you're not throwing over the fence? How do we actually get security more involved in this? How do we get the developers more involved in the security strategic planning? It's really important we don't go off on our own. We don't have the idea that we're, we're you know, shifting left is just the divide, the divide going, hey, we're going to put security on the, op the development teams. We're going to put operations on the uh, development teams. We're going to call it DevOps and DevSecOps now. It really is not that solution. It really is about coming together. Oops, and switch to the next page and having a proper, real balanced team. Uh, it, it's, if you look at the way agile and extreme development has happened over the years, there really has been a focus on the idea of a balanced team in there. And, and it's usually focused on your product manager, your product designer, and your product engineer. 
And as it was mentioned earlier on, on the conversation around the changes going through this DevOps lifecycle, is security and support and marketing and the rest of the business that's there as part of this conversation of a of the supply chain that goes into this application factory, it is not a linear path. There's not going to be from one step to the next. It's going to have these branches that are breaking off and going out into the uh, the different parts and security and, and, and your support teams. How do you actually build the documentation that your customers can use for your products if you're not integrated into the actual life cycle of the application? So these are really important to tie together and bring into this you know this whole big story of, of one big table. And not that I'm against silos and having specialties. I am not a designer. I am not someone who can actually conceptualize things from a, an easy flow of deployment. I'm a security professional. I'm a risk analyzer. I can help bring to the table, how do you analyze the risk? How do we actually make security as part of our process? And how do we actually get everyone talking together? And I'll give, give another story on this in a, few, in a few moments to help understand how I've actually seen this be really successful in the, you know, in the actual world of our customers. But it's really important to, to really get to developers and security teams and the operations teams and all of these other teams, the marketing, the sales, and everyone else together. We have to remember that developers and the SRE teams have had a decade now of building automation, building these processes, building this, this language of working together from a software uh, supply chain, but also from an operational side. The security teams are just now beginning this process. We need to have some empathy back and forth. We need to go along with what I really enjoyed about the, uh, the, the Agile and Extreme methods I learned at, at Pivotal was the idea of a paired program. We're actually working together and sharing resources and skills. We're tying together the KPIs and objectives of the team. We're actually able to help the developers share that knowledge of development life cycles into the security teams. Because remember, security 30 years ago, to get into security, you had to actually be an expert in a lot of things. You had to be, you had to know networking, you had no programming, you had to know the systems, you had to know the switches and the routers and how it all worked together. And then you could like get into security and tie it together. But nowadays, security teams are being built with specialists, people who know how do you do application security. It might even be language-specific security. How do you tie all of those together? But they may not be developers anymore. So we need to have the developers and operations teams, they're all working together how do we help the teams that don't have automation build automation? And how do we actually get them to succeed in the future? It's not a short journey we're doing. It's a long winding road through many lifetimes and generations. And, and you know, going back to my one of my favorite stories here in The Hobbit and Middle Earth is it didn't all end with a journey to Mordor. It all started, you know, even you know, decades beforehand when the ring was first found in Ford. So there's this journey you're gonna have through changing of your application factory to actually you know, bring teams together is really gonna be essential to the conversation. How do you actually pair and partner together? How do you actually incentivize teams? Uh, it was also mentioned in another talk earlier, and I fully believe this is one of the things that, you know, that you need to cover, and it was covered also in the Forrester research, is how do you incentivize these teams? How do you actually get a team that's in, get their KPIs around doing the actual objectives of you know, faster development or faster releases or getting you know, the, the things out of the door, but then security is a, is you know, incentivized. How do we actually get these teams to have security has the same reach as a, as a regular feature. So we're actually solving the problem for our customer. Remember, we're all on this table together. We're trying to move forward. One of the best examples I have of this was a bank I was working with uh, about three years ago, and they were actually rolling out an online credit card. Now, I, I, I think one of the most interesting things about this is they're, they're a very modern bank. They had a team that was specializing in the agile development. They were experts in what they did as banks. They knew what the regulations were. They knew what the controls were. And they weren't afraid of the challenge of actually introducing a modern product in an old and legacy bank. But it was, it was the best success of this was how they actually made it go fast. They actually had the security team. So when I met with the CISO and we talked about the methodologies that we were doing to, to go about this, this labs-based approach of building out their software and application factory, they actually uh, embedded the security people within the teams and sprints. So every week when they had their sprint, the security team would actually say, we need to have these controls in place. They'd build the tests, which would feed back into the enterprise pipeline, and they would actually go fast. Because only in working together can you actually go fast and be secure and successful. And with this process the bank went through, they were able to deploy 56 or more microservices across four large, large clusters, supporting a major online credit uh, banking and solution in less than four months to production with full production security approval. So it's only in these methodologies and ways can we actually have conversations and making all happen much smoother and with real success and real security. 
So I apologize for going through this really fast. As Matt said, you know, you get a lot in these 10 minutes. I wish we had some time for some conversation afterwards. I'll jump back in Slack and happy to join this. But join you later, we're going to have a, um, a panel discussion. Dominique, uh, we should talk, she talked earlier, and I'm looking forward to having this conversation further. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or to VMware, and I'm happy to uh, spend as many hours as you'll let me talk to you. So Matt, thanks, and, and back to you.